Imagine that every second building that you walked out of today pancaked floor by floor by floor into a cloud of dust behind you. Or imagine that every second bridge that you drove over collapsed and left you underwater with a killer ton of concrete sitting on top of you. That is the best state of data warehousing today. Okay, I'm coming down this way. I was planning to talk to some audience up that way, but let me come down this way. Okay, that's the best state of data warehousing today. It's a tragedy. If it were any other field than IT, we would have royal commissions, heads would roll, we'd have revolution in the streets because of the rate of failure that we had. But we tolerate it with data warehousing. I'm going to prevent that. I'm going to tell you what you have to do to not make that mistake, to not be one of the 50% of data warehouses that crash and burn and fail. A little bit of a credibility setter. I'm on a project at the moment where the team members get to choose each person's avatar. That was what they chose for me, the grumpy old bugger with the walking stick. Now, <laughs> I don't really like who am I, but um, yep, there's a couple of people in this room. If you're under the age of 35, I was building BI and DW before you were born. So I've been doing it for a very, very long time, and I've made a huge number of mistakes in that time. And what I want to try to share today are just some of the lessons that are going to help you pass that process. So problem number one, reason for failure number one, and it might sound funny when we're talking about building a data warehouse, is don't build one. Now there's a bunch of products out there today, Trifactor, Alterix, they're great products but they are not the solution to building the data and analytics that your organization needs. Why? Because they're tomorrow's version of Excel hell. And you know what I mean by that? I mean that everyone's got their own spreadsheet, everyone's got their own version of the truth, everyone's got their own way of doing things. That is the situation that you end up in when you try to use personal products to do corporate strategies. So if you're using Alteryx to blend your data, or if you're using Trifacta to pull together your cloud data, you are using the wrong solution in tomorrow or a year after or five years after, you will be in a world of pain. The reason I chose that slide, if you haven't been to Brim in the Wimra, head up there, those silos are absolutely fantastic. They painted them with some identities from the town. So having said that mistake number one is don't build a data warehouse, mistake number two is build a data warehouse, but it's build only a data warehouse. So what I mean by this, if your project has its ambition as building a data warehouse, you are doomed to fail. And the reason for that is that data has no value until it's in the hands of the end user. So if you are not delivering data to an end user, your project is doomed. You must be looking at integrated BI and DW, delivering the data that is necessary to satisfy the user requirement. Otherwise, you're just playing games. You're just putting data there for its own sake and you're going to fail. And the reason that we chose that particular image in this case, the very worst case that I can remember was a project I was working on at Telstra. And when I walked in there, I said, um, how do end users access the data? They said, we don't let end users access the data. This is a data warehouse. Well, that project failed and you can imagine why that might be. So, failure number three follow fads. Now, okay, I'm old, but I never followed that particular fad. Thank God. Can you imagine? No, don't imagine it. It's a horrible image. But data lakes, data vaults, Hadoop, um, uh, streaming, Kafka, Uzi, fads, all of them. If you take your data warehouse down these particular paths, okay, there's a couple there that won't mandate failure but they're red flags. If you see there, some of these acronyms in your project, you are not going to be delivering the value that you need to in the time that you're delivering it. And that's the biggest risk. If we don't deliver value from the data warehouse, that's the reason that the project gets pulled. And it's value that relates to the next couple of things that I'm about to talk about. This one, buy an appliance. If you buy Oracle, Neteza, Green, well, you can't buy Green Plum anymore, they're out of business, but Microsoft Appliance or any other Teradata Appliance, I just happen to choose them as an example, you are making an incredibly expensive mistake. That's because you are paying for tomorrow's capacity and doubling the capacity for disaster recovery in a non-scalable platform so you can't ever make it smaller 
you can only ever make it bigger and you're paying a huge amount for that. The cloud completely replaces this. I'm working with an organization in Geelong at the moment. They got their support bill, just the support bill, from the vendor of their data warehouse platform. That support bill was greater than the entire cost of an equivalent configuration in that vendor's cloud data warehouse. So we could have taken all the data that they had, put it in the cloud for $75,000. They got a support bill for $76,500. And that was before they had paid the licenses, the hardware, the operating costs, the infrastructure, etc., that was necessary to run that. If you start with the cloud, you pay for just the capacity that you need today. You can scale up when you need to, and more importantly, you can scale back when you need to, so that you're not paying for capacity that you're not using overnight, for example. You can't do that with on-premise hardware. You're wasting your money if you go down that path. Next one, hire ETL developers. I'm going to couple that with the next message, which is hire ETL testers. Now, I don't want to pick on these people. This is a great looking bunch of people. They're happy, they're proud of their work. They work for a company called NLS in India, which is an ETL testing organization. Some of them look like really great people, people you'd like to have a beer with. This bloke in the middle with the glasses, for example, looks like a really fun guy to go out with. But what these people don't realize is that they are in the position today that craftsmen, carriage makers were in 1910 to 1915. They're in a position where their industry is dead and they don't know it. And the reason for that is that automation is crushing IT in operations like this. Automation of the data warehouse that also delivers testing, which should also be done by a developer who should also be a business-focused business analyst with some development skills associating with them, is wiping out the ETL developer and the ETL tester, and that's a good thing. Because after hardware and software, most of the costs of the data warehouse go in this direction. So with automated testing, continuous integration, continuous deployment, all things that are facilitated by automation, you now start to understand why Wipro, Infosys, uh, and organizations like that are laying off hundreds of thousands of people in India at the moment, and it's turning into a national crisis, because these roles are just disappearing across the globe. Last point accept and fix bad data. A project I was working on uh, before the current one, we had a requirement to classify some data so that we had categorizations of type of work. And one of the types of work was sample requested, so that they requested the sample from a supplier and checked it. And that was a workflow milestone. Problem was that in the systems, it had S-A-M-P-L-E requested. It had S-O-A-M-P-L-E requested, where someone had made a mistake. It had S-A-M-P-L-E-R-E-Q, where someone had got lazy and just didn't want to type the whole thing. And then what happened is that the BI developer thought, I'm going to be clever, I'm going to fix this and patch it so that it works for the data and I can put it on the report. So he hard-coded all of these translations into the report. And what happened? The minute that guy walked out the door, they changed this critical path process for that job and the whole thing broke. If that had been pushed back to the user community, there would have been some chance of getting the data right and making it a resilient system. Another example, uh, a project that uh, I worked on a couple of years ago had four different systems that allegedly gave the same piece of information. If you wanted to know sales, we had this system, this system, this system, this system. And no one in the organization was ever asked to say which one is the truth. And that project failed because when data was delivered, no two sets of data ever agreed or reconciled anywhere across the organization, and no one trusted the information that came out of it. So tracking, understanding, and analyzing the data before you build your data warehouse is a critical component in your success. So how not to fail? Two slides. First one. Recognize the value of the data warehouse. It's all about value. It's all about, it has no value until the data is in the hands of the end user. After that, deliver integrated data warehouse and BI, not just the data warehouse. Third one, don't chase fads for their own sake. If someone says, this would be a great opportunity for us to try technology X, hit him on the head and throw him out the door because he's a game player. You want people who are there to deliver, not to add a line on their CV. Third one, cloud first. If you're not doing cloud, 
you're wasting money on your data warehouse. That is the future. $1,000 a terabyte on Redshift if you pay slow, high capacity disks. Compare that to $20,000 a terabyte on some of the cheapest appliances that you can get out there. And ask yourself, where is that other $19,000 a terabyte going? And what could I do with that if I had that money in my organization? Most important, this is our business, data warehouse automation. We automate the process of building data warehouses. We take it from months and years to days and weeks to deliver the end-to-end -end solution for the data warehouse with automated testing, with data profiling, screening, cleansing, etc. And this is what we do. So the only advertisement that I'll try and put in here, uh, Agilius is a data warehouse automation organization based in Bendigo. Uh, but we have customers all over the world, and we do everything from profiling your data, screening it, ingesting it, transforming it, presenting it, and even integrating directly with Tableau, Yellowfin, Click, Power BI, so that you get an end-to-end -end solution. You can deliver your data warehouse super fast. So that's really all that I want to say. Thank you very much for giving up your lunch to listen to me. I really appreciate it. I'll be just outside the door here if you'd like to chat about anything that we've spoken about or maybe to talk about Agilius or see some of its content or something like that. But thank you, everybody.